In today's video, I would like to discuss levels of preparedness. For example, right now in southern Missouri, it is about 50 degrees. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. I'm in a t-shirt doing my chores, and I'm plenty comfortable because I'm kind of a polar bear and I like the cool weather. However, in the next few days, we're looking at highs in the single digits and wind chills of negative 5, negative 10, negative 20 for an extended amount of time. That takes an extra level of being prepared, right? We we're already prepared for winter time. We know it's coming every year, right? So we were prepared for 30 degrees, 20 degrees. If the weatherman were to come on and said tomorrow night it's going to get down to 10, we are ready for it. However, when we're talking about that kind of bitter cold, we were not ready for that. Our animals weren't ready for it and some things that I need to make sure are okay and in working order. Um, like I hadn't checked those things, so I need to check those things. So I'm going to bring you along today uh, as we do those things and then I want to discuss levels of preparedness as we think about the days that lay ahead. And I want to have a very sobering conversation about it. Somebody made a comment on one of our videos the other day and they were accurate and they were right and it's things that we had talked about before but I think it's good for us to refresh our mind and remind ourselves of the days that lie ahead and the seriousness of them. Also, I want to take this moment to announce that my wife and I are planning on trying to do a live stream January, I think it's 15th, it's a Monday. It's the next coming up Monday. We would like to try to do a live stream. and we, we're, Our topic is kind of going to be like where we were, where we are now, and our goals moving forward, where we would like to get to. However, really, we just have a topic because we want to have something to talk about, and our hopes are that you guys will get on our live stream and comment and ask questions and we'll be able to have some dialogue with you guys. That's kind of what we're hoping for. On top of that, since my wife shut down her channel, Modest Mom, and isn't doing video, well, she didn't really, I guess the channel's still up, but she's not doing videos anymore. It'll give you guys all a chance to talk with my wife once again, which will be a good time. Anyhow, if any of that sounds interesting, I encourage you to stick around for the rest of the video. My name is Justin. This is Built on Faith Homestead or Leaving Egypt, depending on which video platform you prefer to watch your content on. I once was lost, oh, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. So here's the deal. The wind is blowing way too hard for me to do audio while I am showing you the animals and getting them ready. So we'll just play a nice little tune behind it. Um, I also want to tell you that what you're going to see, you're going to see me cleaning out the wood stove. And you're going to see uh, a considerable amount of buildup in that wood stove pipe. It's not a lot. Um, it's about what I expected, but there's a little bit of buildup in it. Let me explain to you how we get the buildup here in our home. It is not because we burn green wood, because we don't. We burn very dry hardwoods, oaks and hickories and those kinds of things. Great firewood. Truthfully, we are blessed in this part of the country to be able to get a hold of some very good firewood. The reason we get the creosote buildup is because we live in a tiny house, and we have to choke those fires down pretty heavily. And so when you do that, it creates more smoke, and it creates more buildup, and it creates more creosote, which really isn't a problem as long as you know it and understand it, and you take the time to clean out your wood stove flue. When I say take the time, we're looking at 15 minutes tops of work, and that is like from the getting the tools out of the shed to putting the tools up, right? It's like 15, 20 minutes. It doesn't take no time at all. However, I want to explain to you why we get the creosote. I know some people burn wood that's too green and you get it that way or whatever. Um, ours is because we have to choke down the fires because our house is so small that it'll make it 105 in there if we don't choke them down every once in a while. Unless it is down to them negative temperatures we have coming up.
All right, you've seen the video, right? We got the straw for the animals. We made sure that the well house's heat lamp is working. We also cleaned out the wood stove flue pipe. Um, what I didn't record right is obviously I just kind of went over the watering apparatuses that I have, the faucets and things. We're gonna make sure that they stay thawed out to the best of our ability, stretch the hose up running downhill. That way uh, all of the water in the hose will run out of the, out of the hose and hopefully won't freeze up. Uh, I can use buckets. I got everything close enough. It's not going to be a big deal to bucket water to it. Right. We, we got all of that stuff ready and prepared and ready to go. We got the goats facing goat shelter facing south. So the sunshine will shine in there. We got a bunch of brush in behind them to the north and grasses to help uh, their shelter even be more comfortable. Plus all of the straw. Like we, we took care of all of that. So why is this my example? of what we need to do in the future or what we need to be doing now to prepare for the future well somebody commented on a video that i made and actually they commented on a comment and i actually do read them i know i don't comment much because man that takes a lot of time to put out really thoughtful <laughs> comments back to you guys um, i try to hard them so you know that i'm at least reading them um but somebody commented and they were talking about like what good is it really whenever uh, you might have everything right you may have everything paid for and you may have a great community that you're working together with and all those kinds of things you may be off grid and have everything paid off and and all of these things have a bartering system and and those are all great things and things that i think we should be working towards however like when we're talking about the mark of the beast time like is that really going to be helpful because the truth is it's like a car sliding down the gravel road. I don't know if y'all heard that. Anyway, so the truth is, like, if you can't pay your taxes, the government's going to come take your land. If you can't pay your taxes, the government's going to come take your vehicles. So, yes, I think that getting off grid and building community and all of that, that's fantastic. And that's stuff we need to do. If I use my example, that's 30 to 10 degree weather time, right? Like for, for, for the days that are 30 degrees to 10 degrees, like it'll take care of that. For the days that, that maybe things are just really expensive or we have massive power outages or um, things are really hard to get at the grocery store or we're famished with war and violence. Like, like I think that, that being off grid and having community and bartering and trading and in all of that and having everything paid off that you can like it'll take care of that time from like 30 to 10 degrees but when we start thinking about the 10 to the zero to the wind chills of negative 10 negative 15 negative 20 well now we're talking about in that same example like living like a homeless person truthfully and having to stand for your faith in a whole different way than any of us have had to in the united states anyhow right and so really, right, the Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God. The rest of it will be took care of. Now, I kind of hear Billy that. That's not King James per se. Uh, but that's what it says. That's what Jesus said. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and all the rest of this stuff will be added to you, right? All your food and your shelter and all that, your clothing, right? Don't worry so much about all that. Seek first the kingdom of God. So obviously, that's the first thing I believe that we should be doing. And then after that, um, any preparing that you do, like, don't let that become your idol. It, it certainly can as a Christian. Like, you can start to think that, well, if, you know, you need to do all of these things. And uh, if you don't do them, then you're not going to survive. And all. Listen, like, <laughs> trust in the Lord. Yes, do those things. I, I, you know, it would have been really dumb for Noah uh, to know the flood was coming. When God told him to build the ark just to say, all right, God, I'll just sit back and wait. If I die, it must be my time. Well, it would have only been Noah's time because he was too ignorant to build the ark that God told him to build. So, for the days that lay ahead, absolutely we should be preparing. We should be preparing spiritually first and then physically. Uh, but don't think that just because you got everything you know, paid off and you're off grid and you've got a great community um, around you that you can barter and trade with, don't get drawn into this idea that like, it's all going to be okay because of, it's not all going to be okay because of that, right? Like, they can still come take it. And so, be prepared to, ultimately, at the end of the day, be prepared to live like a homeless individual. I think that's what we all need to do. And there's some things I think we could all do to now to benefit us when that time comes. Just like today, 
I'm cleaning out the wood stove pipe. I'm making sure that the well house heat lamp is working. I'm making sure the animals have bedding. There's some things we can do to prepare and be ready. Once again, my name is Justin. This is Built on Faith Homestead. We're leaving Egypt. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you on the next video.